Hi everyone, so today I'm gonna show you how to create this illusion procedurally in geometry nodes. So let's get started. So here I have a spear going in a straight line from position A to B and if I increase the number you can see it's starting to look like it's rotating. If I make the number higher you'll be able to notice that. Look at this. Now if you focus on one of the points it's just moving in a straight line. It's not even going in a circular motion but it looks like it is. Anyways that's the setup that we're gonna create. It's not that complex. And let's uh, do it. If you want to create realistic droplet simulations and condensation effects for your renders, H2O is the tool for you. I've made videos about it, you can watch it. And now let's get on with the tutorial. I'm gonna add another plane. Tab, scale it up a little bit. Let's subdivide it so that we get a good number of those. And I'm gonna go to my geometry nodes right there. So now let's create a new unit system on this. Now right here we don't need the group input for now so I'm gonna remove it and all we need is a point in my scene first so let's get points connect that here and now I'm going to instance a curve line on this one. So let's get a curve line get an instance on points node connect that to the instance. So let's make this zero. I'm gonna make it one on the y-axis and negative one on the start y-axis right there. So we get a line that's even on both sides. Let's duplicate elements. Then we want a value that when we increase it we get more lines and they all fill up a circular pattern. So let's uh, duplicate elements. I'm gonna get group input node. Uh, connect that amount right there to the group input. Select the amount, make it the resolution and a very important thing here is uh, make the minimum value to 1 so that it won't crash when we make it 0 and the maximum is okay so that's it. Now let's uh, set position but before doing that keep in mind you have to set the duplicate elements from point to spline because we have a curve right there. Put the set position in here. In the position I'm gonna get a vector rotate node. We're gonna get the position for the vector and let's get the duplicate index node and divide this by the resolution that we have. And then I'm gonna multiply it just like that. I'm gonna multiply it by pi. So just type pi here. This is the value for pi which I think means 180 degrees. So let's divide that and multiply it by pi and connect that to the angle. Now I think I have to realize instances right here yeah, so these instances are not just points, they have real curves in there. Now, if I increase that, you can see they are fitting correctly in this circular area right there. Now, let's trim this first curve with a sine function. So, I'm gonna get a trim curve node and let's just instance something on that right away. I'm gonna instance on points, get an ICO sphere. I'm gonna bring down the radius. And we want it only on one side, so let's get in end point selection node. I'm gonna make the start size to 1 and the end size to 0, so that when we change this, you can see the spear is moving back and forth just like that. Now, we want a scene time node, just animate everything. You can also use a float value and I'll put it right there, then keyframe it. But I suggest using this. So let's get a math node and I'm gonna set this to multiply. So what this will do is just give us a control for the speed of the animation. So I'm gonna hit N right there and name it to speed. That's it. Now let's make now let's make the default value to 1 and right there this is 1. Now let's frame this area to organize this a little bit and F2 to rename it to duplicate we're gonna get a sine function and also we're gonna get a map range. Our map range is gonna be going from negative 1 to 1. And now let's connect that to the star value right there. So now if you look at this, I'm gonna bring up the speed to 4 or something so that it's playing faster. So you can see at the ends it's a little bit slower and at the middle it gets faster. So that's kind of a harmonic motion that we want here. Now it works fine with one curve but we have a lot of them. They're all moving at the same offset so we're gonna just uh, change the offset by subtracting some values from each of them uh, based on the index. So let's get a math node. Let's subtract. I'm gonna get a spline parameter. This is what we use for the curves. Get the factor and I'm gonna get a math node, multiply it by pi and connect that to the subtract. So now you can see that 
each of them is offsetted with a specific number. That's it. That's the math part of this. So if I change the point resolution to 1, then 2, 3. So that's a pretty interesting effect that we got going on here. So now let's create the plane that was displaced with these lines. So for that we just need our group input that we subdivided before. And I'm gonna set position of it. Set position. We are gonna get a vector math. Let's set it to scale. I'm gonna get a normal node and now we need our lines that were full, not trimmed. So these are the full lines. I'm gonna get that and curve to mesh. Because we cannot run proximity on curves, so we're gonna convert it to mesh first. Then geometry proximity, select edges, because these are not faces, of course. And in the distance, I'm gonna add a color ramp. That's the easiest node right there, we can use it and connect that to the scale. Now you have to join this right there for this to see. So hold control and shift and drag it just like that. If you play with the color ramp and bring these values back just like that and let me just make the color a little bit gray so that it's not too much. Now I'm gonna subdivide the group input again so that we get a smoother one. Subdivide mesh, that's it. Let's uh, add a set shade smooth at the end. Shade it smooth. Now you can play with the color ramp to make it work for you. I think this is good. Now if you want to change the radius of this whole thing, you can just come to the curve line right there. I'm gonna get a combine XYZ node and connect it both to the end and start right there. Now get a value node and connect it to the Y axis is on both sides. Now I'm gonna get a math node. We need one of them on uh, negative. Yeah, the start one needs to be negative, so let's put that right here, multiplied by negative 1. So when you do that, this value is going to be always negative and this is going to be positive. So if I change that now, you can see it increases the whole radius of the thing. Now you can just get a group input node and connect that right there and hit N, make this the radius. What else we can do here? I'm going to frame that too. Let's frame that as well. That's it. It was a pretty cool setup to make. I'm gonna hit N and in the radius we're gonna make the default radius to 1 and hit backspace on this one. So now it's normal and that's the setup. So if I make it 1 you can see it's a linear motion. If you increase it slowly everything works perfectly fine. I'll see you in the next one.